Good morning and welcome to worship at Holy Trinity today. Welcome those who are here in person and also those who are joining us through the live stream. Just a couple announcements. We are collecting for personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief. You can get everything for a complete kit or just some of the items. You can find that in your announcements, which um, I should tell you, those who are joining us via live stream, you can find a bulletin at our website, htluth.org, and also the announcements. And another announcement, just to um, remind you that next Sunday we'll honor our high school and college graduates. And so if you haven't told us about one of those graduates already, please do so this week by Wednesday, if you could please. And now we'll prepare for worship with our prelude. Please turn to confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. 
We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear indifference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal, three in one, and we praise your power, majestic, one in three. 
Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. We will read responsively Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy is the Lord of hosts. God's glory fills. 
fills the whole earth. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy. If you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds, the words that are spoken and our hearing of them, be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So pretty much every time we worship, every week we worship, we use a creed, either the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, like we will use today. We usually use the Nicene Creed on what we call festival days. This is a festival day, Holy Trinity Sunday. In each of those creeds that we use, we make three statements of belief. We say that we believe in God the Father. We say that we believe in Jesus Christ as Son of God, and we say that we believe in the Holy Spirit. And as we say these words, we affirm our belief in the Holy Trinity, God as, as Abba, God as Son, and God as Spirit. This is a belief that's central to our faith, and yet it's not an easy concept to explain or describe. Throughout the centuries, gifted theologians and biblical scholars have attempted to explain the Trinity in logical terms. And as they have discovered, it's not an easy task. And through the years, you've probably been given those visual examples of helping us try to understand what God looks like as Trinity. You know, the one's water. It's an example of saying that um, 
if it's gas, solid, or liquid, it's still water at a molecular level. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of the other examples that try to help us wrap around this understanding and concept of Trinity are things like different branches of government, all executive, judicial, and legis legislative. They're all government. Not sure that's a good example when we talk about God, but anyway. Perhaps there, you've heard the example of an egg. You know, the egg has a yolk and a white and a shell. All egg. And then there's St. Patrick's description of that clover leaf. Three little clovers that make one leaf. Three circles make one leaf. There's an example that I've always liked to think about and read about. I've never been able to see it, but there's this unique tree in a Catholic retreat center in Johannesburg, South Africa. The description and picture of the tree says that when you're viewing it from one particular angle, you see a singular tree with one large trunk. But when you stand at another angle, you see three distinct trees with three distinct trunks, and you can see the roots, in fact. The tree is nicknamed Trinity, three in one. The base of the tree has become a meeting ground in South Africa where community is experienced. Around this beautiful tree, it comprised of these three trunks, yet still one, there's deep things of life discussed. People are drawn to this tree no matter where you lean on the tree, you are supported. No matter where you gaze upon it, it is beautiful. Three trunks, one tree, inseparable and unified at its base, drawing people together, drawing people into fellowship with one another. The existence of this tree is a natural and compelling illustration of what it means, as we say we believe, in this triune God of ours. The trinity that we believe in operates in us in order to create community. No matter what name we use to refer to our God or use to name our God, we are claimed, loved, and ultimately saved by our eternal loving God. Our three-in-one God, inseparable and unified, will bear us up, will be with us. This trinity that is so central to our faith is pretty amazing stuff when you get right down to it. But even with all these examples and visual images, even lifelong churchgoers find it difficult to articulate this theological concept of Trinity to those who have never heard of it. A reading of church history through the centuries reveals an intense debate over the explanation of God as these three persons, yet one, so perhaps rather than try to define in logical, theological terms this triune God, I think it's better for us to focus on what lies at the heart of our understanding of what Trinity means. Another element that lies at the core of our life of faith is the understanding that we cannot talk about God without talking about relationship. The foundation of our faith says that God is so full of love that God chooses to send us out in different ways. Some theologians even suggest that the very basis of God creating the cosmos itself and humanity in the first place is that God seeks relationship with us. God created humanity in order to have people to love. So when we look at it that way, we find that from the very beginning of time, the dynamic power of love lies at the heart of God's identity and character. And so God enters into relationship with us in three ways, as creator and um, a series of covenants as God, and then in sending God's son to demonstrate in word and deed just how much God loves us, and now in our day, in our time, as spirit who bears witness to God's ongoing love for us in all creation, God's desire to draw us together. 
So thinking about God as one and three or three and one becomes thinking about three different ways in which God loves comes to us, is made complete in our relationship with God and with all of God's children. All the passages from today describe this profound love of God that draws us into relationship with each other and really with the whole of creation. So to understand the Holy Trinity is to discover God choosing us, adopting us, and loving us with this unconditional, grace-filled, forgiving kind of love. We experience this Trinity as something beyond, as something among us, and something within us. Martin Luther wrote that the Trinity does not explain the nature of God, but rather our relationship with God. This doctrine, it's a doctrine, this Trinity, it can be so very complicated at basic, but basically reveals that relationships stand at the heart of all that God is about, beginning with the very creation of the universe. Atoms do not exist unless they are in relationship with other atoms. And basically, you and I do not exist if we are not in relationship with others. Our identity as Christians is based upon our relationship with God, but also with our relationship with one another. The truth is that we will probably never fully understand the Trinity by trying to find words to describe the meaning on a logical level. But recognizing God as three persons is basically acknowledging that the God of creation is looking for relationship, seeking relationship, and that our true meaning as human beings is found in this relationship with God and one another. I think the concept of Trinity helps us understand that this gift we call church is at its best when we are able to come together in unity, keeping the love of God as creator, as son and spirit at the center of all that we say and do. The Trinity is about the loving relationship between God and humankind, but also the loving relationship among us. We've been loved, rescued, and led by a nurturing, redeeming, inspiring God. Keeping our belief in the power of God's loving relationship with us through the Holy Trinity at the center of our life together is so important. And it can help us as the people of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of the Holy Trinity in Hershey find ways to strengthen our loving, our loving of each other, our loving of ourselves, and our loving of the people in need in this community and the world. Amen.
three, the Father, Spirit, and Son, and for sins, praise and interweave, now I love and am set free. To shame in sin is joyless life, the dance of Trinity. Together we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray each petition today in the prayers of the church, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and the response is, hear our prayer. On this festival of the Holy Trinity, let us pray to the triune God for the world, the church, and for all in need. We pray, O God, for your Holy Church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Teach us to care for this wondrous gift entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for those who suffer due to war, conflict, and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Send your strengthening presence to all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially today for Kay Baker, Betsy Barnhouse, Dale Bayshore, Bob Bentleyon, Susan Bianchi, Sue Bishop, John Bowerman, Carol Bowman, Fran Buchanan, Ruth Byerly, Wally Folkrod, Ginny Frank, Marcia Garrett, Libby Gladfelter, Annie Girl, Eleanor Gould, Fred Gross, Marie Halliday, Drew Herdson, Carolyn Hess, Donna Hickson, Rosavina Hamasak, Mary Hebner, Andrew Kinsinger, Mike Kozer, Courtney Christen, Sherwood Lingenfelter, Diane Lingle, Jean May, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Haley Mitchell, Chip Murray, Sharon Murray, Jeff Myers, Linda Ott, Julie Sellard, Margaret Sherrick, Eva Shoup, Ira Shoup, Carl Silman, Laura Spenenberg, Christine Terhune, Kelly Utter, Charles Baklovic, Stephanie Warfield, Mike Welty, Joan Zimmerman, and all those we name in our hearts are allowed. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who gather in your name today, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. Especially on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember all who sacrifice their lives to protect the lives and freedoms of others. Comfort all who mourn with your life-giving spirit of hope. Today we pray especially for the family of Jean Henry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace-filled love. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and And also also with with you. you. And you can share the peace by staying where you are and just turning to each other. Just some words about communion today. You notice you didn't pick it up on your way in. We're going to... um, Share Holy Communion today by the means of a continuous manner. I'll greet you down below, and I'll confess it's due to I'm having some foot issues again, so it helps my foot. So I'll meet you. You'll come down to, I think, to uh, whatever the ushers tell you to do. How's that sound? And I will hand you this. Um, We have many of these still, and we're going to be good stewards and use these as long as we need to. You will see there's bread on one end and there's grape juice on the other. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. As we share Holy Communion, hear these words, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen.
the body and blood of Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts, satisfied the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.